What will the future of air travel look like? This is a question that many people are asking as the industry looks for ways to become more sustainable. One option that is being explored is the use of biofuels. In this video, we will take a look at the future of sustainable aviation biofuel and discuss its potential benefits and challenges. The worldwide aviation industry accounts for 12% of global CO2 emissions. Traditionally, aviation fuel is made from oil, coal, or gas, all of which are substantial contributors to global warming. As part of their efforts to live up to the sustainability pledges they've made, an increasing number of airlines are making the switch to sustainable aviation fuel in order to lessen the impact of their operations on the environment. As more people move to cities in search of better economic prospects, the demand for air travel will only rise. In light of this, the aviation industry made a commitment in 2019 to cut its CO2 emissions in half by the year 2050, in comparison to the levels that emerged in 2005. But what exactly is sustainable aviation fuel, also known as SAF? Aviation sustainability fuel is an alternative fuel source created from a number of feedstocks that differs from typical jet fuel in that it does not utilize sources like oil, coal, or gas. SAF feedstock supplies can come from a wide variety of places, such as used cooking oils and municipal trash, food scraps, and energy crops. The aviation industry expressly coined the term sustainable aviation fuel to emphasize its commitment to acquiring feedstock in a sustainable manner. This is because there have been occasions where the production of feedstock for biofuel has had a negative impact on the environment. For instance, several regions have undergone deforestation and changes in land use in order to generate additional land for the cultivation of energy crops for the manufacturing of biofuel. The phrase biofuel is sometimes not used since some forms of SAF can be produced from sources that are not biological. Because of this, the term biofuel does not apply. SAF, for example, can be obtained from the power-to-liquid method which tries to recover manufacturing wastes and convert them into fuel. One example is converting waste gases from steel production into SAF input. By deriving SAF from waste, it reduces the amount of waste left to decompose in landfills, while also reducing the additional CO2 emissions that will be emitted during the decomposition process. When energy crops such as camelina are used, farmers can also experience added economic benefits. Since camelina is a rotational crop that can rotate with crops such as wheat, it can create a new income source for farmers. This also reduces monocropping, which is known to affect soil health and lead to increased pest infestations. Using SAF will stabilize the cost of aviation fuel by reducing reliance on fossil fuels. Compared to fossil fuels, which are limited by supply and geographical location, SAF can be derived from multiple sources. As more SAF feedstock suppliers come into the market, the price of SAF is expected to stabilize, offering airlines a more sustainable fuel source less affected by price fluctuations. So, is SAF safe to use in all aviation fleets? Every single SAF blend needs to be verified according to ASTM D1655, which is the same standard that is utilized for conventional jet fuel. If SAFs are validated under this specification, no further modifications are required for them to be used as aviation parts. SAF can currently only be utilized in a mixed form. The blend ratio varies depending on the feedstock. However, the highest allowable SAF blend is 50%. But earlier this year, a group of aerospace experts started the world's first in-flight emission study using 100% SAF. This showed that 100% SAF could be used in aircrafts in the future, which is good news. In 2018, the first flight using only SAF went off. When compared to total industry fuel demand, uptake has been minimal since then. The restricted supply and accessibility of SAFs are two of the primary reasons for the low acceptance. Due to limited feedstock and facilities, SAF is only generated in tiny quantities, resulting in a higher unit cost of production than traditional fuels. The generally higher price of SAF prevents a substantial obstacle to the industry-wide adoption of this fuel type by airlines. Furthermore, many airports lack the infrastructure to offer SAF to planes. 
According to the International Air Transport Association, the aviation industry is responsible for the consumption of 278 billion liters of fuel annually. According to their findings, there is the potential for a profitable market for SAF, even if it is used in less than 1% of the fuel produced around the world. Using municipal garbage or agricultural wastes as feedstock, for example, is an obvious use of circular economy concepts. SAF is an excellent resource, since it uses garbage instead of letting it rot in landfills, which would generate even more emissions, and it does so while eliminating the usage of petroleum. In America, where aviation accounts for 11% of all transportation-related emissions, the Biden administration vowed to fulfill 100% of aviation fuel demand by 2050 as part of the Build Back Better agenda. It plans to do so in part by providing grants to projects around the production, transport, blend, or storage of sustainable aviation fuels. Over 370,000 flights have taken to the skies using SAF since 2016 and it is estimated that implementing this fuel could contribute nearly 65% to the reduction in emissions needed to reach the net zero target in the next three decades. However, the number of annual passengers is projected to increase up to 6.9 billion by 2035, and it is estimated that by 2050, around 450 billion liters of SAF will be needed. This would require a massive increase in production. It is to be noted that sustainable aviation fuel comes with potential cons. SAF may currently be more costly than traditional jet fuel. According to the International Air Transport Association, the average worldwide price of jet fuel is about $3.5 per gallon, about 100% more than a year ago. Compare that to the U.S. average price of a gallon of SAF, which is about $8.67 according to Global Air. In fact, IATA estimates SAF in all its iterations generally costs two to four times as much as any aviation fuel. Some reports indicate it may get cheaper in the future as demand, scaling, technology, etc. increase or improve, but other reports say it may never be as cheap as kerosene-based jet fuel. BP.com goes as far as to indicate that higher costs might be limiting wide uptake right now, At the moment, production of SAF is limited as the higher cost for SAF is preventing wider uptake. CNBC.com indicates that the increased cost for SAF over traditional jet kerosene will ultimately be paid for by the consumer. This obviously makes air travel more expensive for consumers, and they may have no choice on certain flights that use SAF. There's also the query of whether this adds increased pressures on lower-income citizens who usually travel on budget flights. It should be noted that several SAF products don't use 100% sustainable aviation fuel. They're blended with conventional jet fuel. Although there might still be a reduction in carbon emissions with blended fuels, they still partially use petroleum-based fuels, with hydrocarbons in them in the final product when they use conventional jet fuel. Some of the reasons fuels might be blended might include for efficiency, performance, and cost, and other reasons. And the scale of use of sustainable aviation fuel is not yet where conventional jet fuel is, and there might be barriers to growth. There's a range of barriers that have to be overcome first, in order for SAF to match conventional jet fuel quantities on a commercial level. Some of these barriers might include advances in technology, increases in scale, changes in policies and tax credits, consumers paying for increased prices of SAFs compared to traditional jet fuel, and more. Now the question arises, is SAF really the key to making aviation greener? Well, SAF can drop straight into existing infrastructure and aircraft. It has the potential to provide a life cycle carbon reduction of up to 80% compared to the traditional jet fuel it replaces. SAF will play a really important role in meeting the aviation industry's carbon reduction targets. However, we need to use all the options to reduce carbon that we have available. There are several broad opportunities for carbon reduction across the industry, such as more efficient aircraft design, smarter operations, and the development of future technologies, like electrification. Increasing production requires long-term policy certainty to reduce investment risks, as well as a focus on the research, development, and commercialization of improved production technologies and innovative sustainable feedstocks. On an individual level, some airlines are now providing passengers and corporate customers with the option to fund the use of SAF in order to reduce emissions associated with your ticket. 
and we think these are really positive initiatives. Finally, cost reduction is the key to increased acceptance and deployment of SAF. In the long run, this will demand investments in cutting-edge technology that can process feedstocks more effectively and at larger scales, as well as investments in the development of feedstock options that are both sustainable and scalable. However, in the short run, intermediate support from governments and other stakeholders in the form of policy incentives is required. This assistance must be part of a long-term framework to provide investors the confidence to undertake the large expenditures required to increase SAF supply. Well, that's it from this video. What do you think about the future of sustainable aviation fuel? Do you think the aviation industry is doing well to go carbon neutral by 2030? Share your thoughts by commenting below. If you enjoyed this video, hit like and share this video with your friends to help spread awareness. Also, consider subscribing to our channel for more interesting videos every week.